What's up, YouTube? Today uh, I am here with another installment of un or repair. Okay, repairing a main disc player, and actually we're not going to be repairing, but I'm actually going to be um, tearing apart this unit that actually already works. Um, if you saw my last video, I had a, another one of these that actually was blue. As you see here, this is gray. What's interesting is the whole unit is gray, as well as the text on everything around here. So what I'm actually going to be doing first is showing you that this works, because, you know, I don't think you've ever seen an MDST-70 actually work before. In fact, there's no other videos on YouTube that will show this. Um, when I put it in there, what's cool is all these lights actually light up. And if you ever get a unit, one thing is is that these colors actually represent the um, type of format you're doing. This one represents um, standard. This re represents LP2, and LP4 is on the bottom. And when you click play on the back right here, oh, crap. So, fortunately, the battery seems to have been messing with the unit itself. Either that or it's low on battery. If I hold it straight it should have been work but I guess I just need to recharge the battery but anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into this unit and I'm going to clean up the contact and make it so it works better. So let's get started with the actual um, teardown part. Okay, now that we're inside the unit, we actually have visibility of the actual contact and all that. <clears throat> when I first got this, I noticed this. Um, if you can see right here, the actual battery contact is very poorly maintained. and actually looks like it's developed a little bit of corrosion. Um, and from what I can tell, it definitely needs something to... Uh, get rid of that corrosion and most people don't realize this and I'm sure it's actually a very simple process all you need to really do is just take sandpaper and roll it and sand it onto the actual contact area and it actually will remove it the only thing is is that you might have to bend if you ever do have to do that you might have to bend something inward if the contact is very small like this and what that will do is it will actually push on it easier and will lead to a better feel on the actual electronic device. Now, what I'm going to do is, luckily I had a little bit of sandpaper in my drawer. I had someone go and grab the screwdriver set because I didn't actually leave it for myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub on the actual contact until I actually get some more shiny stuff right here. And that should make it quite able to actually get a better feel when I let's just say drop it on the floor it won't stop it will continue to play rather than turn off I was actually quite surprised it actually worked in the beginning but it actually did hold a little bit of power and was able to actually do it the only unfortunate thing was I had to hold it in my hand rather than actually being able to put it in my pocket which though that sounds kind of you know I'm kind of nitpicking at that this at the most it's not that big of a deal because I've had to do that with other units that I've come in contact with pun not intended there this is actually completely done off script so everything I'm saying is just completely off the whim uh, seems a little bit harsh right here after you do this I would recommend having an isopropyl bottle and something to clean this off with because this is going to get messy 
it's not something that's you know easily able to um, get that all. I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, I'm just gonna do one thing so that I can get the layer of corrosion off. The first layer is always the most important layer. Just how the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Sponsor me, uh, Folgers, if you can, please. I'm desperate for money. Um, anyway, I'm going to also clean up the contacts in here because, my goodness, this is a disgusting internal board. I'm actually very surprised about how disgusting this looks. It may not look like much, but look at that. That is a lot of dust on there. And most units, even the one that I got that was broken before, it didn't even have as much crap in here as this working unit does. And I don't know who used this prior to me, but they really needed to take good care of this. Um, take good care, not tape. Also, this isn't a tape player, so that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> um, seems a little bit more visible but might need to continue cleaning a little bit more. I'm going to do one more thing of isopropyl on the other end, and then we're going to go for a nice sanding. We're also going to clean the internal of the actual case, too, because this thing is dirty as frick. Um, I'm going to also do a little bit of a scrape because you know sometimes you might actually have to scrape it it's not the best thing compared to sanding but scraping actually does a better job of getting some of that nitty gritty shitty titties off there. And as I'm looking at this, still black. I really honestly don't know how this thing got black because that's not a common thing for any sort of device to actually have a black um, sort of overcoat. Um, but uh, yeah, let me... Um, with some more. I'm not going to take off this part of the case because that's actually unnecessary and it's not really, there's stuff to clean under there but it's nothing really detrimental or anything like that. I'm going to test the contact right now and see how it plays. As I showed you before, it might not actually play right now. I don't know why because this thing was able to play all day. That'd be kind of weird if, I mean if that guy was able to get this thing to temporarily play, you know, I'd actually honestly like to know how he did that because, you know, I have some units that I'd like to at least temporarily be able to play. Um, let's see. Now, this last part right here, that's actually what will turn this on. So let's plug this in. It's weird. And so, seems to work, definitely works, but it seems that the contact is still a little bit fragile. So I'm going to clean a little bit more up and then come back. Actually, my battery is almost dead, so I'm going to come back after this thing's completely cleaned and put back together, and I will do kind of maybe like a picture of the inside of the unit when it's completely sanded, but you get the idea of how to sand and clean it up. Um, talk to you guys in a bit.
All right, now that I uh, cleaned up the contact a little better, it still is a little bit black, but it's enough to actually get some power from one side to the other without any trouble. I also uh, went to the front over here and I cleaned up the uh, lens just a little bit so it's not doesn't have any crap stuck in it. Uh, now we're going to get to actually putting the unit back together and then I'm going to wrap up and explain a little bit about the unit and how to use it a little bit further. Let's get started. So after uh, the last cutout, um, you know, a lot of things actually transpired that didn't really go well with the actual device. One of them being that um, the actual charger wasn't actually charging and I opened it up and it seemed that the wire that was connecting broke off of the solder joint. So I had to resolder that <clears throat> and then I realized the sandpaper, you know, dollar store sandpaper doesn't actually work that well. So what I did um, with the device then was when I came home, I got back out the solder iron and decided to uh, do some soap maintenance. Now you can't see in there right now, but what I did in here was I took a little bit of solder and I put it on the edge of the joint that um, hits the contact right here. And what that does is gives it a little bit more stability than it did previously. So now the device is able to function better. Um, now what I do want to show you right now is that the device in fact actually works in that mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it up to my uh, donor uh, speaker, this pill, uh, and then I'm going to put in my uh, music and show you that it works. Now, I don't know if this is copyright or not, because it is 21 Pilots, but it's their older stuff before they got uh, super famous. I recharged the battery after I restarted the joint, and it works properly. The light doesn't turn on, but it still works. So anyway, as you can see, the light flashes, signifying that it's fine. Now, that's not actually because of this. It's actually because of this, and this is actually a dollar store cord, so it doesn't work that well. But as you can see, when I go like that, or higher up, it doesn't turn off the power, it doesn't do anything. I tap it on the sides. There's a small part right there that kind of does affect it a bit. But that's about it. Right over here. Other than that, it doesn't really seem to do anything. There's a little bit of a buffer, but that's about it. And the great thing is, is that it stays on, so that's what I mainly wanted from this unit. Not, I didn't expect it to have a bad buffer or anything like that, so that's all I needed. It's all good now, so it's all better. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and I will be posting new content soon. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.